Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I've made some updates to the pick and place wheel app, mostly bug fixes. But in this video, I wanted to show you two of the new features I've just implemented. So without wasting too much time, let's get to it. So the first new feature I want to show you guys is the new inventory management system. One of the things I had to do a few weeks back was to figure out the exact quantity of all the components I use for my, for most of my boards. And I usually do this whenever I need to restock some components. It has always been kind of a tedious process, but I just thought to myself recently, the Pick and Place Well app already knows a lot about the PCBs that you're placing. It knows the components, it knows where they are placed on the on the PCB, it knows the quantity of each component. So I figured why not just use the pick and place wheel app to always keep track of the exact quantity of components that I have since I use my pick and place wheel to make most of my PCBs. And that's exactly what I did. So the way I've implemented this feature is by instructing the app to create a master components list. So the app uses this master components list to keep track of the quantities of each component that you have in a particular wheel. For example, um, this is my default wheel, which I just named my purple wheel. Although the wheel is not purple anymore since I upgraded to my new um, pick and place wheel XL. Anyways, that's, that's besides the point. So in this master components list, you see a list of all the components that I have in my wheel. And there's a column that tells me the exact quantity that has left for each component. And the pick and place wheel app manages keeping track of this count. I really don't have to do anything except for when I need to, except when I need to restock my components, I just open up the master components list and I can see the exact quantity I have left for each component. So I'm just gonna show you how that works in the app and how to and how to get it working properly. So if I start the pick and place wheel app, normally you don't need to um you don't need to run the app from Visual Studio. I already have the installer on the GitHub repository. So I'm just going to load um I'm just going to load a sample project. All right, so if you come to the component info section, which is right here, you can see I've added a few more things. That's if you if you have the first version of the app. So what I've added here is quantity. So as you move um, as you move the wheel and move from components to components. This will update to tell you the exact quantity that you have left for that specific component. So you have that for wheel one and wheel two. And then I've also added a done placing board button. Now I'll, I'll show you what this button does um, in a minute. So the way to set up the inventory management system is, so whenever you want to load a new component into the wheel, the way you do that is you select the component from the list so I'm just gonna pick a random component here, say 10 kilo ohms. And I select the slot on the wheel that I want to load the components into. I'm just gonna pick a random number, say slot 66. And then I click on update component position. Now, um, before, the, um, before the new inventory management feature, once you click on update component position, it just takes this, um, this slot number and then and then stores that in the CSV file for this project. So it appends this wheel slot number to that CSV. But now when I click on update component position, it shows um, an extra dialog box and it tells you to enter the quantity of the components you've just loaded. So by doing this, it will add that component to the master components list and it will also append the quantity that you enter into this box to that list. And in doing so, you've just informed the app of the quantity you have for that specific component. So the app can consequently help you manage the counts on that component. So um, I'm just gonna enter a random number, let's say 100, and then I click on okay. 
So you can see it says new position added and then I click on OK. So I'm just going to show you what, um, what that did. So if I go back to my documents and then I look for and then I look for the project folder, you can see it created this new my green wheel master components list. So if I open if I open that file, you see what we have there. Right here, you can see under the master components list, it has added the 10 kilo home 0603 resistors with a quantity of 100, just as I entered when I was updating the component position. So if I go back to the app and then, and then I click on done placing board. Now you would only click on this button when you've actually completed the um, the component population for for whichever PCB you currently have on the wheel. And this dialog tells you the same thing. So it says, this process will remove the appropriate quantities of all the components used on this board from your master pick and place wheel components list. Have you finished placing this board? If you've not actually completed the board population process, you should not click on the done placing board because um, because if you click on that without actually completing the board population, then you'll be deducting the components that you didn't actually place. So it's important to only click on this button when you've completed the board population process. So I'm just going to click on yes and to tell me components quantities have been updated. So if I go back to the master components list, you see what happens to the 10 kilo ohm resistors that I added. So if you take a look at the 10 kilo ohm resistors, you can see that the quantity has reduced to 91. And that's because on this particular PCB, you have nine instances or, or nine quantities of the 10 kilo ohm 0603 resistors. So it has deducted the appropriate amounts from that, um, from the master components list. And that's how the app keeps track of the exact counts of components that you have on the wheel. You'll also notice that the quantity is displayed in the components info section, just so you can quickly reference it when you are populating the PCB. So that's it for the inventory management feature. What you need to know is whenever you load a component into the wheel slot, make sure to enter the quantity that you load into the slot. And then when you're done populating the PCB, make sure to click on the done placing board button and that would subtract the appropriate quantities of each of the components used on that particular board. And by doing that, you can always keep track of the exact quantity of the specific components that you have on the wheel. All right, so the second feature I wanted to show you is, is a floating components details display. Essentially what this means is you can now move your mouse above any of the components on the board and you get a floating window that will tell you what that component is. That's including the name, the footprint, and then the value. It will also tell you which slot on the wheel you have that component loaded into. So for example, um, right here I have the Sam D21 G18 and it's telling me um, it's unloaded. That's because I don't keep um, my sensitive ICs in the pick and place wheel. But if I go to some of the passive components, like for example, the resistor I just loaded, which is the 10K resistor, you can see, it tells me it's a resistor, it tells me the value, and then it tells me the footprint, as well as the slot on the wheel where the component is loaded, which is wheel one slot 66. So you can just move around the board and then quickly get the details for specific components. So instead of having to find the components in the components lists, you can just move the mouse over it and then you quickly get the details for a specific component. This can be useful if you uh, maybe missed a component while you are placing the PCB. So you can just, so you can quickly locate whichever components you skipped. All right, so those are the two new features I wanted to show you in this video. Now, before I end the video, I should also mention that these features have been implemented in the web version of the Pick and Place Wheel app. So you can see this is the web version of the Pick and Place Wheel app. And you can see in the components info section as well, you have the quantity, you have the additional info for quantity, and then you have the and then you have the new done placing board button. 
Also, when you click on, um, when you try to update a component or when you try to load a component into the wheel, it will also ask you for the quantity. It works in the exact same way as the Windows version. And you can now download either the Windows installer for Windows users, and you can download the web version for all other operating systems, including the Raspberry Pi. If you'd like to know how to set up and run the Pick and Place Well app on a Raspberry Pi, I already have an article on Axstar that will tell you exactly how to, how to set up and run the app on a Raspberry Pi. So you can just um, read the instructions. Um, so that's it for this quick video. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed watching and also consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you guys in the next video. Bye.